Um, so this is our decolonization lecture number six, I believe, and this is going to be our last one before your unit test on Thursday and Friday. So Thursday's test uh, will be the multiple choice and Friday's test will be the enduring issues essay. So this particular do does include a video clip. So the video clip will be linked in um, Google Classroom. There are quite a few videos that go with the Israeli, uh, the Arab Israeli conflict. But when you're watching this video clip, I want you to think about, you know, what observations about the Israeli conflict are you seeing in the video? You know, what can you infer about the conflict between Palestine and Israel? And what questions do you think you might have about this conflict? This is a conflict that started in 1947 and has continued to impact the world up through today. So if we take a look at our objective, I can define the term Zionism and explain its role in the creation of Israel after World War II and explain the causes and effects of the Arab-Israeli conflict. So we are going to be looking very specifically at what Zionism is and what is this Arab and Israeli conflict. So this is going to start back in 1947, like I talked about. And if you remember at the end of talking about the Holocaust, we kind of brought up this idea of Zionism. And Zionism is this nationalist movement of creating an Israeli state for Jewish people. So giving the Jewish homeland back to the Jews. This is going to be something that is going to be very popular by obviously a lot of Jewish nationalists. And we want to think of Zionism as a nationalist movement. This is going to be something that you're going to see a lot of Jews really fight for, especially after the Holocaust. We want to really connect the creation of Israel with the end of World War II and after the Holocaust, where you have this huge uprising of Jews who feel unsafe in the land that they were living in. So in 1947, the UN creates a two-state solution for dividing Palestine. So Palestine existed. Um, and Palestine just happened to be in the same region that Jews considered their holy land and their homeland, which happened to be centered around the city of Jerusalem. Problem being that the Palestinians had already been living there for hundreds and hundreds of years. At the very beginning of the year, we talked about the idea of the Jewish diaspora and how Jews had to leave their homeland and scatter throughout the rest of the world. This is a direct result of that. They left and the Arabs moved in. In May 14, 1948, Israel declared itself as an independent state. One day later, Egypt, Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, and Iraq invade Israel. By the end of 1948, Palestinian state no longer exists, and you have hundreds of thousands of Palestinians and Jews becoming refugees. Israel went in, created this country, established themselves as a separate nation, and were able have been able to very securely defeat every Arab nation that has attempted to invade them or remove them from their place. Israel has stated very often that they are never willingly walking back into the gas chambers ever again, meaning that they are not going to go into any kind of conflict quietly. They're not going to trust anyone who tells them that they have their best interests. They are going to do this for themselves. Now, there's been intermittent warfare throughout all of the Arab-Israeli issues. And since, you know, 1947 to present day, there is constant bombing and attacking and issues in Israel. In October 1956, you have the Second Arab-Israeli War. By 1967, you have the Six-Day War between Israel and Arab states in the Middle East. Israel controls the West Bank, Jerusalem, Gaza Strip, and Sinai Peninsula as a result of this war. Now, this is going to be something that's going to be very important because a lot of these regions are very Palestinian heavy. And Israel does not necessarily always treat their Palestinian neighbors or Palestinian citizens very well. They don't always acknowledge that those are places where those people have lived. And these people have lived there for hundreds and hundreds of years, no different than the Jews. They claim this as their home. And how do you have this continuing conflict when both sides are right? And the difference you also end up seeing is that once Israel is created, it was created and large numbers of people, Jewish people from across the world, moved to Israel because they believed it was their birthright to do so. And continuing in 1973, the fourth is Arab-Israeli war. So I want you to take a look at these maps. So in 1946, you have the British Mandate, which means that this is where Britain controlled Palestine as an impact of imperialism. And you can see the Palestinian areas and the Jewish areas. Um, there are very small amounts of Jewish areas. There were some Jews that stayed in that region, uh, but the country was Palestine and the country, the, you know, the religion was Muslim. If you take a look at the UN plan in 1947, that region is supposed to be cut up. So Israel is in the white and Palestine is in the green. And one day you just woke up and you are no longer living in Palestine. You are now living in Israel. And it was just as simple as that. 
you were not really given an option. You were not given a choice. One day the border was changed and you were no longer living as a citizen of your own nation. And you can see from 1949 to 1967, slowly but surely, Israel managed to expand. And this land in Palestine was shrunk smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, Jerusalem has always been considered an international city. That recently changed when President Trump declared it to be the capital of Israel. Um, I believe we talked a little bit about it at the beginning of the year when we discussed religion, but this was a big deal because it was always considered an international zone, that this was not going to be claimed by either side, it was not to be claimed by either country, it was not to be claimed by either religion. It was supposed to be an international place where there would be peace. And you can see that by 2010, Palestinian has almost ex ceased to exist. And the country itself fairly rarely exists. It is not considered a separate nation. It has petitioned multiple times to gain their statehood back, to become a separate nation, but they have yet to really do that. So the struggle for peace. There have been many attempts at peace. Um, the, first real the first real success came in 1978 with the Camp David Accords that were signed in the United States. It is one of uh, Jimmy Carter's biggest achievements. Um, and he was able to sign peace between Egypt and Israel. This is going to cause a lot of problems because part of that peace agreement was Egypt recognizing Israel as a separate nation and as a as an actual country. If you were to talk to most uh, Arab nations in the Middle East, they will not recognize Israel as a state. They will say that that is the state of Palestine. Uh, if you were to talk to some of our Muslim students who are from that region, they will also tell you almost the exact same thing. So when Arab countries saw that another Arab nation acknowledged the fact that Israel existed, this became a huge conflict throughout the Arab world because it felt like being betrayed. In 1993, you have the Oslo Accords, which were signed between the Israelis and the PLO, which was the Palestinian Liberation Organization. And this was a first real step between these two groups. Now, if we were to take a look at this cartoon, we see in the corner, we see Israeli nukes. And you can see USA, Europe, UN, and it's the anti-proliferation brigade. And they're saying, enough already, Van Hu, which is the tiny little man that's trying to pull the attention of the USA. Can't you see we are busy? And if you look, what are they focusing on? They're focusing on Iran and their tiny little nukes. Now, Israel does have nuclear weapons, and Israel has been very vocal about the fact that they are willing to use them. What is also important to realize about Israel is that the United States has stated that if Israel asks for our support, militarily or anything, we will go and support them. So understand that this is something that we need to be very aware of. Now, this video will be linked into Google Classroom. I do highly recommend that you watch it. It does a great job of breaking down Jerusalem and what is going on and how Palestinians feel and how Israelis feel. It is not super long. So if you take a look at this, this is the breakdown of your unit exam. So we are coming to the end of decolonization. So on Thursday, 4-9, you will do your multiple choice. There are 11 stimulus or stimuli and 25 multiple choice questions. On Friday, 4-10, you will get your enduring issues essay. If you have any lingering questions, you have any confusion on the Arab-Israeli conflict or anything about the decolonization, please join the Google Meet between 12.30 and 1 every weekday. Shoot me a text, send me an email, give me a call, let me know what you're struggling with so that I can help break it down for you. As always, ladies, I hope you're always staying